Hello my friends, I'm Rick and this is your Seat at the Table and got little Missy sitting up here over here on to my right and we are looking at a rare Wednesday. Once again, I've already did a great video for March. Uh, my truck's broke down again, getting a major overhaul this time, $27,000, <laughs> right? And then I had a, I don't know, some kind of infection in my foot. I've cropped up over the weekend, blew my foot up real bad, been to the emergency room, I went to the urgent care, then the doctor's office, they're gonna send me to a specialist in a couple of weeks. Uh, they'll give me some antibiotics. The swelling's come down a lot, so it's, but there's still some issues going on there. Um, hoping to get the truck back by the weekend. They, they're, they project it to be done by Friday. Uh, whether or not we got the financial side of things wrapped up to pay for it is yet to be determined, but uh, should have the truck back by next week, which I hope, because uh, I'm trying to, to be proactively positive about the week. Uh, I'm not getting paid at all, which makes me a panic in a lot of ways because I, I don't, I, we don't, it's, we can't afford to miss a check. Any check is a problem. And uh, I'm already got a, a short week from the week before because of the problems with the truck. And, and uh, so uh, tomorrow's, uh, Friday's check's gonna be a couple hundred dollars that's not gonna we're gonna be killing the credit cards we got a tax refund back uh, so thank God for that but once again like I said in my bitch video that's uh, not something what you shouldn't have to use it for this but I'm grateful I got it and uh, it'll get us through till next week but I can't afford to do it another week after that uh, it's gonna be bitch just to deal with this one and we'll be paying for it for a long time anytime you use a credit card to pay bills you're paying for it a long time I mean, I've I just I just come to the conclusion this is my lot in life. When I hit 70 and I can't afford, I can't physically work a full-time job anymore, and I have to go on to uh, Social Security. Most of my credit cards, if they're not paid up by then, yeah, my credit would be shit. I've had bad credit before. But when you're living on a thousand, couple thousand dollars a month, and that's what, you know, between the spouse and I are both getting Social Security at that point, uh, take it out of my damn estate when I'm dead at that point. You won't be getting that three, four hundred dollars a month out of me because I won't have it. You know, I just won't have it. Meanwhile, every time I try to get ahead, I try to get bills paid down, I try to get the credit card paid down, this crap happens. All right? Anyway. Are you the video on this crying and bitch and shit? That's what you're here for. We're looking at cycle 18. Uh, we have been uh, going at cycle 16 for quite a while now. Uh, and and it's, you know, like I said, that's the thing with these, this game. Uh, the, the longer you play it, the more shit goes on a cycle. It can literally take months to run through a cycle. I mean, if, if you're in a hurry, this is not the game to have. If you're looking for a game to kill a few hours every now and then, a couple days a week, one day a week kind of thing, uh, this is the game to have. If you want a game that you can you can take into your survival bunker and play 20 years down the road, uh, as long as you got pen and paper, this is your game. Uh, so Amperly, uh, Amperlo is a contracted uh, contracted to one way trip to Trade World. Now we already did a video on what's in the what's in it. And where it's going, I did not bring my thing of tape out, which I needed to do, and I, I don't think I got one up there. I'll have to try to remember this. All right, so fair one starts right here on on our map. You know, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, all right, bring it down a little. I bring it down. Yeah, bring it down. I bring it too down. Yeah, see that it becomes a problem because it's the damn thing's just not. How the hell do we get clear out of that way? Are they moving? I don't, I don't think I'm moving. You know, I just, one of those things where you sit there and you go, what? And you gotta watch move it too much because then it tightens and it loosens the, the little sprocket thing and then it wants to. Eh, Alright, whatever. And now that the reflection of the lights, no matter what you do. Alright, so fair ones there on the map. Now, the movement capability, this thing has a range of seven and a movement of five. So the maximum I can jump in my region is five. So we go from Fairwind, one, two, three, four, five. And this would put us outside. And, and I said it was uh, 
northwest or northeast? That would be northwest. Northeast would be this way. We'll go. We'll go northeast. So one, two, three, four. Uh, from fair one, two, three, four, five. So they would come out here. The next one is going to be five light years. It's going to be up in this, be in a region right up here. So this is one region. Another region would be adjacent down here, down here, you know, all the cord and above. So that's how this would play out. So in this case, we're, we're going to come down to just the last light year in my region of space. And We know that it's not going to have a, a, a uh, there's not going to be a space hazard or anything of that nature here. So we know there's going to be a system or at least an empty space. I mean, it could be just flat out empty space, but we know there's going to be something. So the next map, that's why I got this blank here. This next map would be up here in this corner. So this, this is how it would link up. So knowing that's how it's going to link up, I'm going to look at my numbers here, and this is a 10, so this one's going to be 9. This one's going to be 9, so 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So if the next, the next regional map above this one would be 99, 98, 97 kind of thing. So that's kind of how this is going to play out. And then we have to look at the alphabet going the the, the latitude, longitude. Uh, so K L M N O P Q R S T. So this is going to be U V W X Y Z. Now, generally speaking, when we get to the end of the alphabet, what we're doing is repeating it in a, in a double sequence. So there was a, an A and a double A. And there should never be a triple A or a quadruple A. So it would just repeat itself in sequence. So we would go double A through double Z and then start it over again with A. And, and the numbers all make a, a damn difference. So in this case, it's double A, B, C, D, E. Now, on a lark, uh, on a lark, uh, Buddy and I mapped out an entire quadrant of these things, and that's a hundred of these, a hundred of these little regional maps. A hundred square light year block is considered a quadrant, and so you would have you would have uh, ten of these, and ten of these, and ten D. And so we've got 10 rows above, 10 rows forward, 10 rows across. That's a block. And each one of those squares is a light year. So in this case, uh, each one of these represents uh, 10 light years. So it's 10 up, 10 across, and then 10 deep. So uh, our house, Fairwind, sink, sink is centered around roughly 100 square light years of space that's officially declared controlled and own, uh, operated controlled and overseen by your house. And so adjacent squares, you acquire adjacent, you expand by building additional colonial centers and, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and so on, right? And there's a lot of effort goes into building those. And it's, you can do it, I've done it, I know you can do it. Uh, the biggest house I have, have ever had had almost 30 planets on it. Uh, that I was managing probably plus another 20 or 30 uh, secondary sites that were not considered colonies. And uh, then, like I said, and it was over five, five regions in, uh, in diameter, uh, up, down, all the directions, right? It's all doable. So in this case, that's how this would play out. And uh, so this, this one here would be the you know, the next map up kind of thing. And ideally, the way this plays out too is that on a block level. So you would have a quadrant number. There would be a letter number combo. So the quadrant is just a smaller version of, of, of next the next size up. And, and so if you've got 100 square light years to a region and 100 square regions or, or 1,000 square light years to a quadrant, then a quadrant is going to be one up on a galactic scale of stuff. 
And uh, the sheer scale of the Imperium, in my mind, it covers a significant por portion of the, of, of, the, of the Milky Way. All of it? I don't know. Perhaps not. Perhaps so. Nowhere in, in the lore for this game did I ever include a vast... Uh, there are no alien uh, civilizations out there that can, can, that can hold their own against the, uh, the human beings that control the Imperium. The Imperium is the end all to beat all. And it's its own worst enemy all the time. So it's kind of the way this stuff plays out. Anyway, uh, so we would have this big bulky region. And uh, so we went into the system. So the first thing, of course, we want to do is we're going to do the ship or the system exploration. We've never been to it. So we need to roll and see what, what's there, what the stars are. And once again, I have the advantages of not having to worry about any, any kind of hazard that rolls up here. We're going to re-roll uh, re because the game does not allow for it. We know it's because we're on a, a contracted route to a trade world, it has to go somewhere, and we're going to make it without purposely trying to wreck ourselves in the process. So in this case, the yellow is my tens, and we got a 52. 52 is nothing. 100% zero space, right? So that just that just saves a problem and some paper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the, the map out for the region, of course, and then I'm going to mark nothing, 100%. So we now know that there's no stars, there's no hazards, there's no anything. Now, that said, it's empty space, right? So we came out in first jump. We jump to GG, which is the layer, and the coordinate 10 by T. So GG 10 T. So the region is GG. So the next one over would be HH and so on and so forth. So this up here would be HH, right? So this quadrant uh, where it says GG down here, this up here is going to, or this one here, we'll say, uh, we'll need to say HH. Uh, on it just so we know that way they're in sequence and if we needed to drop them down and, and on, on the floor and, and put them all together and like I said I've done that before so I know you can do it uh, and uh, just how how big a quadrant can be that's in theory in, uh, outside of a role-playing game, there's no reason anybody would ever have a quadrant that damn big. Did I? Yeah. No, that's right. All right, so that also gains me a free exploration role for this space because I, you know, it's I've never it, my house has yet to have anybody go there. So now I know it's a safe place to uh, send a ship through. But once again, what we don't, you know, there's no known. Uh, um, uh, currently known objects so there's no asteroid fields there's no errants there's nothing to mine this system's literally just fake vacant space uh but there could be artificial satellites in there i mean there could be space stations or way stations could be communication satellites a whole lot of shit could be sitting in there it could be a uh, pirate ships lurking in the in the background i mean uh so we can do an event roll Ideally, anytime we would send a ship through into a new system, we do a ship arrival roll anyway. So we're allowed to do that even with our merchant ship, in part because it's a matter of, uh, of aesthetics, right? Uh, you can make the argument, I don't care if they have an encounter or not, because it's not going to affect me personally, my game as I look at it. My, my particular game is not going to be affected by it. Or it could be. If you choose, so if we run, a, we roll an event roll, and it's an engagement with pirates. Well, we could be, uh, you know, we could choose to run through that whole scenario where the ship runs for its life, uh, tries to fight off the pirates, and we try to figure out some way to send help to them. And which, you know, we have no warship to send. It, but, well, we do. We have a sloop. We could send a sloop if it could get there fast enough and make a difference. Which, in theory, it might be able to. That's something we'll have to look at. You know, quite very could be. It uh, could be other event related stuff. It could be a ship that's transporting stuff. It could be something we need to know about. It might be something we don't want to know about. So we can choose to do what we're going to do. So for say for 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 uh, 
my choice will be to go ahead and arrive, uh, uh, roll on arriving in a new system chart. It's so it's a, it's a chart that you get to roll on when you've gone into a system that you've never been to before, uh, that, but you can't roll the exploration because uh, we know there's nothing, there's nothing to explore here. So what we're looking for is, see that's exploring new space. And 100% empty is just that. There's no point in rolling on the exploration of new space because what are we looking for, you know? I mean, all right, so arriving in a known solar system. This is going to uh, reduce the chances of there being uh, uh, something like a sh uh, like a, a discovering a planet or asteroid that's not going to happen. But you still could have some things like you can get a bug attack. Your freighter could be attacked. Do you really want to go down that road? Uh, you could run into a disabled merchant calling for help. Then does the pirate cat or does your ship captain, your contracted captain, follow the Imperium regulations and go to the help of this person with their distress or ignore it? Or and and what do you do about it? And if and or how do you capitalize on it? Right. Uh, and then there's keeping in mind, I have representatives, I have house reps on board, so I have people that represent the house. So the house can interact anyway at any point anywhere on that uh, the ship's operational parameter if we want to within reason. You know, I mean, they're not going to tell the ship captain, you know, he has to leave his ship and turn the control over or something. So meteor showers, ship traffics, pirate charts. See, there's a lot of stuff in here, and some of it, most of it's not good. Uh, it's a mixed bag of stuff, and so I think you know we're gonna roll anyway, and because that's the whole point of the game is to show things off, I guess. So we'll go ahead and do this, and uh, like I said, uh, you know what? Roll that die one time too many. All right, 66, 66. Please be something, nothing. Just be nothing. Just make my life simple. 66. Small pirate ship attacks jumps if your ship outclasses it. Alright, so a small pirate ship. This is a Tech 2 freighter. It's not very big. So this small pirate ship would have to be a gunboat. It would have to be, uh, by definition, uh, the same or size or smaller. So it could be a gunboat or it could be a sloop. Uh, right? So, I don't know. Do I really want to... Let's just find out. Let's see what happens. Right, and we'll have to see if we got somebody we can send to help. All right, so move you know, to. All right, so we got that part done. Ideally, uh, if there had been anything in this system other than you know like a star or planet or anything, I would have I'd have filled this I would have filled this paper here out next and uh, and started you know another folder for that purpose. So for shits and giggles, we're going to stick this in here for now, uh, so I don't don't lose it and I don't forget it. And then I'll go down our list to flip my page around. Go down here and see what's the next ship on there. The next contestant on our on our magical uh, you know whatever tour. Uh, you know what I mean. Damn it. All right, so. Or did they all go back to the Fairland? They might have all went back to Fairland to reload and resupply and, and to unload. Alright. And that's exact. Well, most of them. Yeah, they all, they all did. Alright, that's good to know. Okay, so let's make a couple adjustments on this. Let's restock everything before I send it out because I knew that's, that's, what, that's what I came here to do. And so that would be 9, 12. And yeah, this thing has a naval laser battery and uh, and some gun mount. So, and what is our jump? Where's your movement? Where's your movement at, down? Never four. Movement seven. Jeez, I should have sent this bastard to the trade world. I could have. Wouldn't have carried as much, you know. 100 tons of cargo capacity max. So I guess it wouldn't have been all that much different. 
Uh, I could have used this one. I don't know that it had enough. Uh, sh yeah. No, it could have. Had, it's the same same layout. Uh, the difference between this and that. Amperloa has uh, it's an armed freighter, so it carries more capacity for cargo, but by, by not by a whole hell of a lot more. But it's armed and armored and shielded. So I mean, uh, being this is a, a gun. The only difference between Amperloa and this one, is Amperloa would not have a naval grade weapon in it. This one does. Uh, so, but the speed on this one is sufficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to bolt this puppy out. And we're going to pop it off over here to where our, you know, our contracted freight hauler who's heading for the trade world is already running himself into a problem. So we're going to send Terrace So let's move on to the next thing. Okay. Alright, so at the end of the day, what we're doing here is we're going to, uh, uh, we bumped our freighter out, uh, our new freighter, our contracted freighter, however you want to do it. Uh, and, and it's on the very edge of our, of our regional space. But it's within our space control. So anything that occurs in our space is our responsibility to try to fix or do something about it if we can. So in this case, a small pirate ship is attacking our freighter, uh, and uh, we know there's no way for us to know whether they got uh, tipped off, and they, they know we're running uh, with a bunch of credits, hard credits, and the you know in, you know, in on board uh, or what. But uh, they're going to take advantage of this. And now uh, the Emperor Low may not have enough firepower to fend off that pirate. And if that pirate were to board the Emperor Low, then it's a, then at that point I have to I have to work either a negotiation or an actual combat event out with my people versus their people versus the you know the NPCs of the crew. Because are they going to stand by and let me blow up you know have a raging gunfight in their ship? Or are they going to side with pirates for their own safety? I mean that's all part of the old event role stuff that you would want to check. So in this case we're going to put and send the, the terrace, uh, uh, that our sloop that's on loan from one of our uh, Platinums, uh, and that's one of the reasons it's here. So we're going to dispatch it. Now it has a movement of seven, so it actually moves further in a single jump. So you make the argument it moves faster than the Amperlo. So the Amperlo only moves at a five, this moves at a seven, and I can easily reach it. And so we're going to dispatch it. Uh, the terrace is fully loaded, fully supplied, fully stocked. And we know it's going to go to a, to a system we know is safe for our ship to go into. And this sets us up for an event role, that, I mean a combat, a potential combat event. So we're at this, and then we'll have to determine, uh, uh, in a different video, we'll determine the size of the pirate that's attacking and what their goal is. You know, just how much, how much information do they, that as, a, as the pirate captain has, how much how motivated are they and then we figure that in theory the emperor Lo jumps out of space gets accosted by the pirate ship sends out his transmission for a call for help we need to roll that out we need to make sure that actually happened uh once again, I could have opted not to have done any of this, just to have the ship move to this to that spot and called it good. Instead, I chose to make some, you know, an owl of where we're at. Uh, so the Emperor Low would uh, would potentially escape, and uh, the terrorists would get some much uh, much valued uh, experience from uh, ranking increases from the combat. Uh, hopefully uh, not sustain a sub significant damage because I don't have a whole lot of means to replace or repair anything if it does anytime soon. Uh, the advantage once that trade world's open is that I would be able to get the components necessary to replace and, and repair significant damage if necessary. Uh, the you know, But we don't want to go down that road this soon. We really don't. Uh, on the opposite side of that, the terrorist might get successful and overwhelm the pirate gunboat and knock it out of commission and allow me to capture it. Or, you know, do I try to, you know, if I can, you know, if I can disable that thing, can, do I send a boarding crew in or do I bring a, my, my militia platoon in and make them board the ship? You know, can they do that? They can. There are penalties. 
like anything else, right? So and that's what we're going to do with that. And we'll go back. To, so that goes back to Fairwind then. So that's where all of our ships and stuff are at the moment. So the Silver Hunter uh, unloaded is going to unload all that stuff. And we have to see, did I already unload it or not? TV7. So the answer would be no. So we're going to go ahead and run all that stuff into my exchange. So So we get seven, eliminate that, and I four. And I plus four, okay. Ball number, we just stick it straight in the warehouse. Uh, chlorine CL is five. So now I have nothing in there, so that gives me something to start gaining some credits on. It's always nice. OS 18. See, now there's another item where I didn't have anything in there. Now I do, so I can start making money off of it. Which is good, because I sent some of the raw materials uh, along with the, the, the Amper Low uh, to go uh, to the trade world. So uh, there was at least two that dropped, which would have removed its, uh, its value. So I gained 14. And that one has a negative 1.5, so I'll be able to supply my negative for the next 10 cycles and make a little credits off of that. TI. Uh, titanium is 12. Another one of those where I have a negative one use, so surplus of 12. It gave me a little a little bit. Or I could just stockpile it in the warehouse for. I, I, I know that there are builds that require it, but I, uh, I don't know that I need them anytime soon. So potassium PO or however whatever that represents. Uh, Eleven. I use seven and a half tons per cycle, so I don't see that being a uh, one. I'm just going to warehouse that one. So NA is fifteen. See that's that's one where I use uh, five a cycle, so I can meet the cycle needs for at least uh, a couple cycles. Save a few credits. Art in, art in. See, here's another one that I didn't have anything in, so now I have a little bit, which will generate a little more credits every cycle. Fe. Fe. I used 12 per time, uh, and I don't know what the colonies mind yet, but I used 12. Fe. A whole whopping one. All right, we're just gonna drop that in the warehouse because I don't know that that's gonna make or break won't be until I do the exchange for the for the cycle that the end of the cycle so C5 carbon we have five tons I never have enough carbon because I need them in a lot of products and I need them uh, I use 12 and a half tons per cycle right now just every every cycle so in the warehouse I had 54 so that brings us up to 59 I one, am I one? So we just put that in this in the warehouse. This is not going to make a break. It's not going to be enough to make a break and make a difference. So put, uh, platinum uh, two. So there's one I didn't have anything. So there another one I will generate a whole whopping credit off of. But hey, every credit matters. So, all right. Resupply 16, 7. Alright, so that leaves the mining ship. So let's figure out where to send it. We want to send it somewhere. Well, we can make, we can uh, mine a bunch more of that stuff. So where do we go? Hardmore. 
Sorry. Yeah, we'll go ahead and send it to, we're going to send it over to Hardmore and let it, let it mine over here. So we'll send it over here and it's going to mine. And we're going to then want to know what we're mining. So we're going to do two. Uh, 25. So 25 tons of oxygen. O, 25. ED. We're going to, oh, it's out nine, not 25. Uh, uh, 25. Yeah, seven, eight, nine. So, uh, P nine hydrogen H nine R A. See, I like these ones where they have a lot of, of resources to mine because it's a good possibility we can fill this ship up on our come. We can come within 80 tons of, of filling that 100 ton cargo bay on a one go. Then we will then the next cycle bring it home or we'll top it off and bring it home and unload. I mean, uh, you, you, the, the turnaround's really, really quick and that's always nice. So uh, there's a 10 and a 2 is 12. So our A is 12. So now we're at 25, uh, 25, 34, 46, say 49, 57. All right, it's 57. And now we're on to M, N, 57, and another seven. So it's 63, and A. 67, so 71, right, DB. So that's, that's what we'll do is on the next cycle is we will top off the base, so six is nine. Uh, so we're not quite, not quite 80. I mean, uh, you could make the argument that you're close enough and, but the ship can't, I, I jumped it to the system, it's mining, it can't jump back in the same cycle. So at the end of the day, uh, I, at the, I can, Bring it uh, and mine, fill up the rest of the ship, jump at the fair one and unload the whole damn thing on the next cycle, which is great because the turnaround, that's what we're looking for with these mining ships. Uh, when you go to a place that's only got one or two or you know two or three items, uh, at, at two dice, you're at the most you're getting two to 20 tons per item. So it might take two or three cycles or four cycles if you're rolling poorly, if you get a lot of low numbers and stuff, the longer it takes. Uh, so ideally, the faster the turnaround, the quicker it is for your exchange, the better off all the way around. All right, so that's that took care of that one. So, uh, Silver Hunter. Resupplied. Unloaded. Jump to Hardmore and mine. All right, so let's bring us back to Fairwind and see what's next on our the next contestant, which is the Calmari Scout. So the Scout came back to be completely resupplied. So we're going to resupply her now. Ideally, that, that's I'm taking that stuff out. Of, I'm taking that out of the exchange, and it's going to go into uh, the ship. Uh, and knowing that I'm going to jump into the, I'm going to just move to another system. Uh, uh, I'm going to refill the supply. So it's going to take uh, eight tons of food, oxygen, and water, and eight tons of fuel. Uh, and and uh, so when I mark them down, I'm just going to mark down seven of each. It's not eight because I'm going to, that way I don't have to go back and then and re, redo it. If, if you move the ship or you're taking your time and you may come back to it, you never fill it out till you actually move the ship. So we're moving the ship. Now the question is, is where are we moving the, 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 uh, the Scout 2? Because there's so much stuff in our systems we don't know nothing about. Uh, Dan will uh, know it's, it, it's limited to a, a movement of 2 and a range of three, so it, it, at meds two, so it's not going to go anywhere uh, in my region uh, very far. So I want to look at uh, what 
needs to be explored 100% and what doesn't. And we're going to go and take a gander a few things. Alright, so we have not got very much of Second of Ice Maiden explored. And in part, that's Fairwind's moon. We know that there, there's oxygen, uh, cobalt, and, and water there. So here's a good example of the future reference. What I want to do eventually is get a mining operation set up here, and a, and a and I want a closed direct uh, uh, um, circuit. So I'm going to acquire or manufacture a cargo shuttle, uh, preferably two, but at least one. And then negotiate with a platinum if I can, or find somebody to build a mining outfit here. The problem is the build modifier is going to be a little bit prohibitive, especially early on. So if we can get prefab stuff, that's the route to go. Uh, ideally, if I could get the equipment and all the stuff, the components to build, I'd build a mining platform, which is, and then stick it in orbit over this thing, and then my my shuttles would just bounce back and forth from the helm planet in system, you know, cargo run. So anything and everything that's mined on you know that system could be directly in, deposited in the exchange every cycle. So uh, I would have access to oxygen and water, large quantities of oxygen and water, and then the cobalt. Eh, we use it in some processes, not, but not that much. But it's a great product to ship off to trade worlds, right? So there's always a value in it, and and that would be a, a, a you know, depending on the trade world's payout, that could be a, a very lucrative uh, item to mine, in, considering what else is coming from this place, right? So let's go ahead and we're going to send the Calmar, the the the, the Calmari back over here to Hardmore, because I want to know more of the system, the planet itself, or the moon itself, and so we can get it 100%. And we're going to. Uh, No, I'm, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. It is 100% explored. I'm looking at uh, my current meta, right? Whatever the hell that is, that's from way back. Sometimes you don't update stuff. Maybe pay attention a little better, huh? Meh. All right, so we'll jump it over here to uh, where the Juan Curl is at. Systems explored. The plant's almost explored. This is that one with that uh, uh, industrial age uh, civilization that uh, was also uh, killing a bunch of my shit. So uh, we're trying to get a lot more information on this system. So we'll just go ahead and and, and marry into this and, and get it done. So we'll send Calmar, the Calmary to, and watch I'll have an event roll or something crop up and I wish I hadn't. Ideally, you want at some point you want to get your fleet large enough that you can have a, a ship idling at your at your capital, uh, preferably a warship, and preferably a warship that's got uh, troops, because these event rolls that crop up. So the Amper Low is a great example of that. The only reason I was able to send my sloop to help the Amper Low. It's because that was the first thing in the lineup that got rolled. Had the Amper Lowe been the last thing I moved, perhaps I'd moved all my house ships first. You know, at that point, there's nothing I have that could then be redirected to the Amper Lowe in the same cycle, because uh, everything's already committed. So unless I had a third party ship that I could request in negotiation, and that would take time. Time that the Amper Lowe's crew may not have. You know, you're talking under a fire that's going to happen in minutes and a boarding that could happen in tens of minutes. So, you know, uh, the idea that you can drop, you know, they get in, they come under fire, they squirt, they squawk for help, and uh, you're able to drop a warship on them in the, the same round. That's, that's kind of what you want. Uh, so if you have the ability to have one on standby for that purpose, and eventually you want a fleet of them. You actually have a, a fleet of ships that, you know, two or more that will be set up to work as a group and uh, potentially uh, as your response force you know, to situations and to situations where you may need to buy time to bring other crap in next cycle. You know, nothing, nothing's, uh, nothing gained, nothing wasted, right? All right, now there's two, explore more of Kept It Folly. Alright, so that would bring us Kepa's Folly to 
to 80%. What do you got going on here? Uh, writing it on the inside, not the outside. That's why. That's why, you dumbass. Okay, come on. Kind of really need to color in that uh, that world map there, too, make it stand out a little more. I, it's just a minor thing. I mean, it's just a, aesthetics, but to me, it, it just kind of makes me want to uh, make it so it does stand out a little bit makes it a little better so we're gonna we're gonna take that out all together and write the percentage signs already there so I'm gonna just leave it on the plastic side for now and then this brings us to 80 percent not gonna let me do that is it once again I need my read writable tape god damn it well, I'm going to use, and since I have the, the, the Juan Carroll here as well, I'm going to have them both explore. So this is just going to explore this and bring this to 90%, which would be great. All right, okay. So, Juan, Car Juan Carroll, planetary exploration. Roll and we get, come on, uh, 83. All right, so now we get uh, this and that, and the other thing, ship traffics. Uh, I put tags in these things, and I had one of the cats chewed off, mo I think Frankie chewed off most of them. Now he meant to go back and do them again, but I didn't quite get around to it. So, anyway. You know, on the, the update note, uh, I, I got into page, I want to say page 84 and 94. It's only about page 70 in the book, but on the updated revised version of the game, I'm, I'm, put, I'm not quite short of 100. Uh, I've moved past all the exploration stuff. Uh, I'm in currently working uh, in the... Uh, uh, I just did passengers and, and commercial cargoes and things like that. Uh, so there's whatever the section is. I think it's platinums. I'm working in the platinums, platinums and uh, and guilds uh, uh, chapter at the moment. Uh, these these event charts, all these charts take a hell of a long time to create. And, and then they take even long, you know, they take that long to create. And then you have to recreate them if you're retyping everything from scratch. So I'm redoing a lot of it the hard way and, uh, and, and adding with, with help from uh, uh, a fellow that's creating some AI stuff for it. Uh, we're putting some artwork in it. Uh, it's the intention eventually to, you know, take it kicking and screaming. At the rate I'm going, it'll be a couple of years yet before I can start posting. I can post it on, uh, you know, uh, RPG uh, drive through as a as an item as a thing that's that's the goal the hell with everybody and everything else i'm gonna get this thing out there if it's like nothing else I can sell it for pennies and uh, say i've got it out there for the love of god so uh you know it's just gonna take forever to get there and each chart each thing uh it's not necessarily a bad thing the downside to that sort of stuff is is that it's it's the temptation to want to redo everything because I know that there's issues, I know there's flaws, and some of it I try to correct as I go, and then and I keep plenty of notes on that stuff. Uh, other things is like placement of stuff. Certain things were placed in, in the original that should have been placed somewhere else, but because uh, it's just the way stuff got put together, so now we have some luxury, we can maneuver things around a little better. Uh, so I'm taking that advantage to do that. Uh, and and then there's a, then there's things like what do I have that's redundant, and what do I have that I can leave out. Because there are certain, like when we get into the uh, the genome section, that's coming up soon. That'll be a whole chapter uh, on on how to create your NPC, how to create aliens and human beings and all their glory and all their di diverse differences, uh, dealing with things like cyber uh, cyber uh, cybernetic implants and bio organs and so on and so on, all that stuff, which is a whole another set of chapters by themselves. But uh, just the, the genomes, I currently have probably two dozen examples of pre-made genomes where I'm going to whittle that down to seven to nine because I don't think we need uh, the, the original, the initial core book does not have to have 
50, you know, 40 pages devoted to this. I think that that would be a, a great supplement item down the road if there was ever a demand for it kind of thing. So you see where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go with that sort of stuff. All right, so planetary event. Uh, no, we don't want planetary events. We want planetary exploring new space. Come on, where are you at? Planetary exploration charts. All right, so which chart are we going to roll on? Darn it. Uh, 66, so we're going to roll on chart 2, which is right here where my finger's at anyway. Uh, and 12. 12. Large herd of fauna discovered. Okay. Large herd of fauna. Chart 2, event 12. Yeah, that's it. So, doubles production of any ranches built on the planet. See, so developing worlds, designing fauna and flora chapter. All right, so, 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 for example, we now know there's a large, there's large herds of some kind of animal. This would then involve me sending some people there in person, physically, to observe and to sample and to interact briefly with said herd animals. So I can get some information on them and take samples. Samples from which then I can have my research people do research on if I choose to do so. That said, right out the gate, it's very specific. So whatever, whatever animals these are, they're going to be... Uh, food based right so that being said they could be carnivores because you know what you can raise you you've heard of an alligator farm you can raise alligators for food and for profit not for not in some cases for pets but would you consider them friendly cuddly herd animals you know hippos are herd animals they, they operate in herds and they're and they're vicious bastards and they're carnivores that will eat you too if you get in their way. Not on purpose, but they will munch you up and chew you up and spit most of you out. Kind of get where I'm going with that, right? So it's just not something to make some assumptions. Once again, we could have some big honking, I don't know, brontosaurus beefer things. They're literally the size of, 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 of small office buildings that require industrial uh, industrial farming equipment, i.e. Uh, warm, uh, you know, uh, agri agronite, uh, agrimet kind of crap, to wrangle and, and handle these damn things because they're so huge. I mean, but the fact is, the humanity has the technology and the will to make it happen. So it's just a matter of what, where, and how. All right, so uh, Kevis Folly, Cameron to explore, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, we also got Juan Carroll here, so we're going to have the Juan Carroll also do uh, a an exploration roll. So cycle eight. And the cycle 18 continues. John Carroll explores Kepa's Folly. And this will bring it up to 90%. Uh, so next cycle, uh, it'll be 100%. Uh, hundred percent explore or ninety percent explore. So the next cycle uh, I will use one scout to export one hundred percent and the other scout I may very well send it to the moon because uh, it says here that Capus Folly has a moon if that's assuming I remember to do it you know I'm gonna write a note down here for that on here too all right 
So uh, next cycle, I'm going to I'll, I'll have the uh, the the Karami uh, go ahead and explore uh, the last 10% of the surface. That way, it's 100% explored, uh, and then I will have uh, the the Wankura move to uh, Kepa's Foley's Soul Moon and explore the moon. We're going to find out what kind of moon it is specifically, and then uh, and and if it's worth being fully uh, explored, we will explore it. We will determine the type of moon. Uh, i.e. does it have an atmosphere or not kind of thing and uh, what kind of mineral resources are available and then what numbers uh, for mining purposes and uh, at that point then then one single swath of the moon's surface and because the moons are smaller than planets the the, the breakdown is like 25 it's like 25 percent so instead of 10 percent it's 25 so you would only take four four cycles to completely uh, uh, map a uh, the surface of a moon per se uh and and as opposed to planet so in this case uh we'd have uh, the one Kuro go ahead and divine what the moon is and the stats it might be breathable ice that we want to exploit it might be just chuck a buck full of resources you know it might just be an airless rock with only one or two items but that still might be one item that's that's worth mining you know in lo in quantity so, I mean, it's just to get another source uh, for our mining ships to travel to, I guess, is what we're going for in that, and down the road. And so that would give us the information we would want to have. So the Goncuro, and that brings us, like I said, to, to 90%. And we're going to roll and see which chart's on. Uh, let's see, 83. 83 would be chart three so we'll flip over to chart three and then we'll go ahead and roll this again all right so uh nine one lone boot from a spacesuit drifting in orbit sure why not So at the end of the day, basically what that is, is nothing, right? It's just my humorous attempt at, at the time to create another nothing event role. Uh, although, like anything else, you could get, you could turn it into something. You could decide to have the Juan Kuro's crew stop and recover the boot from space. Can we do that? Does the ship have enough EVA suits on board to do so? Have I equipped them with them? I do not believe. I can tell you right now they didn't come with them, so it's not. It's not something you can automatically assume they should have, because it's an item we can manufacture. But I can make an argument that it, since the ship came from somebody's house, all my ships came from home from my home. You know, the the house lord's home system. That means they had at least the basics. So they would have EVA suits on board for the for the crew. So I suspect that would not be an issue. I guess so I, I could then send one of their crewmen out to the airlock to retrieve the boot and clean up the space over 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 Kepit's Folly, doing my good deed for the civic duty for the cycle, right? Or they bring in the boot and then we have we bring the boot back to the R and D lab and have some people investigate it to figure out what size and who it belonged to. And then who knows, you know, we, this could lead into a whole slew of shit we never wanted, or a, a whole like, wonderful, fantastic thing that we never expected, all because of a uh, because of how you react to an event. Excuse me. At the end of the day, that's what it, that's what it boils down to. How are you going to, uh, uh, re, you know, result to the event or to an or how are you going to react in an event role? Blech. Okay, so we got uh, two scout ships are now moved. One, uh, one wasn't uh, didn't leave anyway. So we go back here to Fairwind, and at least this one Iron Hunter, and Iron Hunter has also got to unload its cargo. So we're going to unload oxy. All right, oxygen. Oh, so we're going to bring in nine. So let's do some PD is 18. 
So 18, uh, so 27. So that's better from what we had in there. Hydrogen 18. That was another one. So surplus 18. So there's another item I can now start supplying uh, for the next 18 cycles. RA 15. 32 to 47. PO is 9. So 11 from the, from the other one. So now we're up to 20s. Now we got a little bit in here. So now well, 20 in the warehouse. Because I, I, you know, even in most most mineral resources, it's not necessarily a bad idea to have some in the warehouse storage wise. Because you just when, when you're doing builds, you never know what the hell's going to pop up. Especially the the later builds, they take everything. So it's just one of those things. M M N eleven. Oh, it's a little bit surplus there. G A is fifteen. Yeah, there's a bunch of these that are going to get supplied this cycle. Are going to be there's a bunch of needs here that are going to get going to get uh, taken or taken or be used or you know what I'm saying. Damn it. So here's then here's some that are not. So here here's an example. Uh, are so do do D B or Durbarium, however it's pronounced. Uh, it the cycle is using half a ton right now. Per cycle, that means I have a negative, negative, zero, uh, negative uh, of zero point five per cycle tax cost on my exchange. So by adding uh, uh, eight tons, that's sixteen cycles, a half a ton. Of, so the next sixteen cycles, that eight tons will keep that need met. So I'm going to pocket uh, uh, about eight. Yeah, I will pocket uh, about eight credits instead of losing eight credits over the next, you know, 16 cycles. Doesn't sound like a lot, but when you add that up to the other, the all the other line items in here, it adds up. It really starts to add up over time. So anyway, once again, erase all that off there and then find a new mine, a new place to send it. Now, in theory, I mean, I could, I could, uh, you know, I could do an end run right now around the the Juan Caro by going ahead and sending uh, sending uh, the Iron Hunter there to the moon, because then I would be able to find out what the moon was and uh, you know what is, what the uh, MR or the OR uh, the MR available is there, and I could surely do that. I don't know that I want to do that though, but. I want to do is I want to go back and look at the systems that I have explored that I do know that have MR that I knew like here this is that asteroid belt where a lot of that crap came from and the sheer amount of shit here is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so I'm going to get 12 items in here and small quantities so we have to juggle our minds what are we looking to deal with here uh, we only get 100 ton cargo capacity for this mining vessel. So this asteroid belt, once again, will be an awesome location for a mining platform. So we could put a permanent mining operation in orbit here and then use, uh, we'd have to have a light freighter or a cargo hauler uh, that can set up a dedicated cargo hunt, a haul between the two systems. Or, more likely in the early stages, uh, we would just warehouse the stuff on the, 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 the platform We'd include enough storage facility uh, capacity in the platform to hold six, 600 to 1,000 tons of crap. And then we only have to send a freighter there every so many cycles to haul it out in bulk, right? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a matter of getting from here to there and, and then from there to the next stage kind of thing. But this is a great location, lots of stuff in there. So I could send the mining ship back there. And I get and I think that's where it came from because the sheer stuff we unloaded from uh, the, early, or the other one was from that one because it was so much crap that was worth having. I, I have mixed opinions on it, right? Uh, all right, that one's got a population of tree aliens, which you're not really supposed to go mine their planet while they're on it. Because uh, it freaks them out. You got to do encounters and other bullshit. Let's see. Second chance with the other stupid damn infrastructure planet. Yeah. 
these things will drive you nuts sometimes. All right. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, man? What are you gonna do? I need to get some uh, tags and tag where the damn planets are so I can uh, pop in and out of them faster. This is Kevin's Folly, so I could send it there to mine Kevin's Folly. No, that's that industrial. Not gonna do that. Well, hell, shoot. I need to explore more of these systems. That's what I need to do. Cause I need to have a bigger variety. So I guess I ain't got much of a choice here. I think I'm just gonna have to send it. Oh, great, and then that falls off, great. How good is that if it's gonna fall off, man? Mine, mine. Yeah. Fair wind, Aaron. Alright, so let's get this bad boy and go ahead and pop her over here. And go this week in a mine over here. takes only thing left is uh, that's all the available ships I got available to me would be my uh, shuttle D for my drop shuttle and right now I'm not I'm, I'm gonna keep it close to the house I don't have a reason immediately to pop it off but we're gonna go and take a fun thing so let's say Fairwin all right let's say population growth Get our trusty barfed on cat cat hair covered uh, uh, calculator. Yes, I know. It's at least clean the damn thing, right? Just shows you how lazy I am. So we have a thousand. We have eleven thousand seven hundred and ten. Is that nine hundred and ten? Nine hundred and ten current population, and our population modifier is. Point zero 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 one. Oh, come on. I'm supposed to do one, two, three, right? Yeah, so we get two, so it'd be point zero zero two one. So eleven thousand nine hundred and ten times point zero zero. Two one equals twenty five. Oh boy, eleven hundred and nine thousand. So we end up with a whole whopping increase of twenty five people. Eh, you can't have big ones all the time, you know. Not really. All right, so. 35. All right, 35. Okay, so event rule. Stuff falling down under the table. There's everything packed up, jammed up under the table too. I got barely enough room to put my foot down there, and my foot mucked up the way it is. Kind of uncomfortable, to be honest. I don't dare say nothing because it gets taken wrong, and then I end up with an arguing fight all day long. I don't want to deal with. It sucks being married sometimes. Some days, right? Some days. 
Alright, so we have a 7 and a 7. So 77, which will put us on uh, chart 3 of the planetary event chart. And 6 and 7, a 67 of, of chart 3. Roll on smuggler shirt. Okay, so smuggler charts. Let's see if we can find a smuggler chart. about size of crap you don't think about nothing right so right now uh, book wise so we're in this page area here uh, working on the revised version so dealing with the platinums neo platinums all this crap just coming into creating house characters NPCs which is also your you know your sub chapter for for personalities and things like chat uh, uh, all that stuff so there's a lot you can see there's a lot of little charts that need to be replicated and as uh, so we're in you know and then there's some other things in here that so we're just whole section and, and then we get into technicians not uh, not uh, genomes genomes are after technicians so that's going to be a pain in the backside all right all right so says to go to smuggler charts and i know there's smuggler charts the question is where the hell are they it's back here somewhere all right so what, what is anything that's setting up a syndicate event chart, terrace chart, pirate chart. Gotta be here somewhere. Here we go. This is probably it right here. All right. Smuggler chart. Smuggler's event chart. Yeah. All right. Roll again. 93. 93. It's probably gonna be something funky. 93. Yeah, yeah, okay, so. Disguised as a merchant. As a merchant. Smuggler approaches house. And brings to sell at the local shower market. So they'll either offer this to you or they'll offer it to anybody else on your damn planet if you don't want to buy it. So we have another another chart to roll. Chart within a chart, so which is nice. Forty five. D10 metric tons of high-end organics. Use the charts in researching, developing exotic discoveries to determine what sort of high uh, exotic and what sort of item. I don't know. High-end organics. Oh yeah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna that uh, right. Okay, let's roll the dice first. Uh, three tons. So we're uh, being three M pound up high end. Organics. I'll write the page number down too. I'm going to 
come back. This is one of those things we got to come back into a damn event roll on. So at the end of the day, what it's saying is, is to go to the uh, flora and fauna section and roll up to determine exactly what kind of organic, high end uh, organic is being brought to sell. And what could that involve then? Well, that could be a whole slew of stuff. Uh, a couple of things right off the bat that come to mind. Uh, this is from previous experiences. Uh, there's something called mole rug, right? M-O-L dash rug. And it's this organic carpet-like rugs uh, uh, that will grow on pretty much any surface. Uh, so you can actually uh, uh, surface the inside corridors of your ship, for example, with, with, with mulch or with, uh, with a, a nice verge. If I'm getting at so you, and and these things the mole rug is actually self-maintaining so it only it only allow itself to grow to a certain to a certain uh, height and then it uh, it's notorious for it's 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 actually carnivorous uh, uh, not carnivorous but uh, omni something what do they call it they'll eat, it eats anything and everything on a tiny tiny scale so like dead insects dust you know, uh, dead skin, things like that, to get down into carpets. That's what the carpet thrives off of. So it gets that stuff and it, and it digests it and it thrives. And then it uh, has uh, some unique properties to it. It can be teased, i.e. it can be uh, uh, trained to grow, so it develops certain types of patterns and stuff. Uh, there are uh, variants on it. Uh, that have been developed and various couple houses have had access to this stuff and did research and development on it. Uh, one thing, one was is that it has, uh, you can put this uh, luminescent, bioluminescent material in it so when you walk across it, it will glow. It will, it will literally leave a, a physical trail of anything and everything behind it for hours right or minutes or seconds depending on how you, you know how you want it to be bred to do uh, and then of course it, it, it's constantly growing so it will expand and it needs to be occasionally trimmed and uh, so you can trim off the excess and sell it or, tr or transplant it to another room for example and, and let the process start all over again uh, that's an organic high-end item uh, another player had uh, a, a grill wood uh, this ex very exotic looking, uh, uh, very it was a deeply rich uh, purple uh, wood uh, with an unusual green surface to it that had some crystalline uh, in 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 elements embedded in it so that it would it'd be uh, reflective under the right kind of conditions. They had to be very specific to get it to go uh, to get it to go off, but you could it could be set up to do something, uh, and it was uh, extremely uh, highly reflected. So it would, you'd polish this, very, very little polish would go a long way and it would become almost mirror-like in substance. So you would uh, uh, have the advantages. It was uh, laser reflective. It was that kind of great between the embedded crystals and, and, the, pro and the reflective properties, it made it uh, laser resistant. So uh, the guy took to making furniture with it. His big thing was he, his house lord's desk it was the size of a small car, and it was made out of this crap. And he could literally crawl up in the damn thing if he had to, kind of, kind of set up. And he went to all the effort to do all that. And hey, that's the level of of, of investment in a house in the play that that some players get out of that game, right? So that's kind of how we want to go down the road. Uh, so we'll have to come back and pursue this a little bit more because uh, this could be very interesting, I mean, entertaining purposes wise. I mean, means uh, in nothing depending on how you want to view the game and how you want to look at it. So uh, we got ship traffic rolls next. Ship traffic roll number one. And we'll roll our dice. So 17. So we're going to want Chart one, but it looks of it. Uh, ship travel calls. Right, so ship traffic rolls, chart one, event sixty-three. So sixty-three, who oh, are you? Please be something that they know the pain in the ass. Oh yeah. Unknown ship explodes as it exits star jump.
we may never know what caused that ship to explode. And then we might get another event that would just parrot that damn event. You know, I mean, just the way this, this damn ship can go. So, 63, unknown ship explodes uh, as it exits star jump. 1d10 components plus 1. Roll for type of percentage of damage. So, we're going to roll 1d10 plus, plus 1. So, 5. 5 components. 5 components survived. So that's another event roll where we would need to come back and, and go through this and uh, do uh, have a uh, go through and figure out what other, you know roll for each individual component to determine what and then we roll a percentage of just how badly damaged they are keeping in mind that even if a component is 99 percent damaged if you have that one percent that's enough for you to rebuild the damn component so you can instead of trying to manufacture it from scratch because you may not be in a position to do that but if you got so this was a tech free fuel cell for example and it, and it has uh, 10 percent uh, or 90 percent damage well 10 percent survived and I can rebuild the, the tech 3 fuel cell from that 10 percent because I already have the device which is the technology I do not need a blueprint to build it I just have to figure out how to fix it repair it and now my technicians are capable of doing that so it's just about it's just a matter of how much material it requires to bring it to 100 percent and what it's going to cost me and is it worth to do that to do that the opposite of that would be to take that same item, to take that same Tech 3 fuel cell, and look up what it's made up of, and divide the components by 10%. We can deconstruct what's left of that 10% of that fuel cell, and take what's the, the individual component material that went into the component, and reintroduce it as salvage into other shit. So we could just dismantle the item for its components, its its materials, and then uh, rebuild something completely different with it. Uh, or we can rebuild the item itself, and we would task our, our repair bay or our shipyard to repair it. And then it's just a matter of do I have all the needed materials and, the, and pay for it. And if you do, then it's repaired, and it's repaired next cycle. You know, it's, it's not something that takes forever. It's just something you need to have the, the materials for. And then you got a perfectly good Tech 3 fuel cell that I could take and shove into one of my scouts to give it a much further range, you know. Uh, so that's here, you know. That, that, that's the value, and it's potentially the opposite. We can get we can get a component that's only got two percent damage. Let's say it's only two percent. You know, we get a uh, we get a uh, um, a hull that's two percent damaged. Well, that's ninety eight percent good. That means we could literally rebuild another ship on that hull, even though it's damaged. You probably would want to repair the damage to bring it up to 100%, but you could, in theory, do that. Uh, let's, let's get the rest of this event, because it wasn't all of it. Uh, yeah. Roll for type and percentage damage. 2d10 plus 5 lifeboat 2s managed to eject. So this helps tell us something. This is going to help tell us uh, what potential size that ship was, because Tech 2 uh, lifeboats hold, I think, 30 people apiece, not 10. And uh, I'd have to look them up to be sure. So 2d10 is quite a few. So let's go ahead and roll our 2d10s. Two two and uh, so 4 and 1, that's 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. So there are 10. Yeah, so potentially up to 300 people are now orbiting in space needing a rescue, right? 300 people. Now remember what I said about being grateful that I didn't get rid of my, sh uh, my, my uh, or s deploy my uh, only shuttle someplace. So my drop shuttle has a 50 ton capacity, so in, in it can hold 50 people in a trip. And it can officially make, uh, technically, you can make as many damn trips in a cycle as you want to make locally. So this drop shuttle can move, it's, a cycle is 10 days long. So in 10 days, this, this single drop shuttle can make enough trips 
to move all 300 people from orbit to the surface all right and so that's not that's not an issue all we have to do is figure out how many people how many trips because that tells us how much consumables food oxygen air and water and you know the fuel in this case chemical fuel that the drop ship or the drop shuttle uses uh, so we can move you know that many people and we're gonna want to know that because we're gonna treat we would treat this these survivors as we would a merchant or a cruise liner showing up in a, in the way that uh, we're gonna determine you know we can roll up pre roll up who survived what their breakdown you know is there specialisms is there specialists in there is there is there platinum is there anybody in there we want to go farm because potentially all available you know these are all available for the house to go and negotiate what to offer positions and jobs and things like that and then you might want to determine okay are uh you know how many of these people were planning to go on to the next thing right so i would have to say that a that a cruise a, not a cruise liner but a tech five or better ship probably a tech six or better cruiser just blew up as it came out of orbit and there might be a million reasons why poor management poor management poor piloting skills poor uh, uh choices uh, an event that took place in route or at the other end before they jumped I mean, if they were in the process of having, you know, in a slugging match with another warship, with a warship, and they managed to jump, and they sustained a considerable amount of damage in the process, that jump is almost instantaneous. So what happens is they, they, they you know, they escape the, their pursuers and they explode on the other side. You know, that's one way of looking at it. Uh, another possibility would be that, I don't know, they had a bug incursion, bugs got loose and destroyed the inside of the ship. Uh, we don't want to, might not want to go and ask too many damn questions because uh, how do we, you know if that if that if you go down that that uh, rabbit hole then you have to ask uh, of the survivors are any of them infected are are any of these lifeboats actually full of survivors because we have events that that are that are designed to you know be the way bugs get infiltrated onto your colony I mean you know not a good day any way you look at it so in this case. Yeah, the house is going to benefit because we're going to go salvage. Excuse me, we're going to salvage what we can. So how do we do that? Which would be another another video anyway. But we would once again, our our shuttle is going to be very very busy, and it's going to first going to have to figure out how many people it's going to have to take to go retrieve all that all the survivors and their lifeboats. You know, so it's not just enough to take them on board. So if they have 30 people in a lifeboat, that's 30 tons plus the lifeboat. Lifeboats probably be uh, two tons or three. It's two or five, depending. On, I don't uh, at that that tech level. It's a bigger boat, uh, but it takes up some weight. So that would reduce how many people. So potentially, we'd have to go make 10 trips to get 10 lifeboats. Each lifeboat crew, because you can't really dock with a lifeboat and unload part of the of the people and then not the other people although there's no hard rules to that uh the lifeboats are designed to have a, their own version of a, an airlock in them because that's how you got in and out of them in the first damn place so it's quite possible you could you know a shuttle could dock up to one and and you just can't use them as a as a as a means to doing anything so you can't have a, a lifeboat floating around fly a lifeboat around your system as a shuttle because they're not designed to set up to do that there's like a one use kind of device and once it's used up it's garbage so in this case uh the argument can be made that i would end up with 10 uh, uh used uh lifeboats that uh, can be refurbished now refurbishing is nothing i mean it's just we're not even really worth the, the mentioning what that really involves but uh basically you're repurposing it so you can reuse it as a goddamn lifeboat again all right so in in theory the next couple ships i build could have a single lifeboat using one of these as opposed to having two or three small you know of the tech one versions uh for a number of reasons right but it's, it's worth having and so the idea with the lifeboats is the same thing you would recover 10 of these lifeboats and then we would take a you know our, our percentage and roll and say okay lifeboat number two is 36 percent intact 
So uh, the uh, the trauma of being ejected and surviving in the depths of space and through a through a, uh, an explosion has you know rendered you know a good significant portion sixty odd percent of the of the drop or the lifeboat is being uh, um, damaged. So we can replace and repair those. So that's something we want to look at uh, potentially keep in mind because we're going to have to go and take care of that. All right, so let's go on to cycle. Now we're still on cycle 18, of course. Jeez, we've got a ways to go uh, for our cycle anyway. So we're uh, ship traffic. Roll. Let's see. What we got on this one. Let's see which chart it's going to be. Alright, so 32, which should be 32. See, there's something. That, that was a, a, an issue that I had to correct this way. So in my revised version, this is, is fixed, right? It's fixed in there. Uh, 32 is going to be a chart, chart 1. Yeah, it's already on this chart. Uh, and then there's... Uh, uh, well, there's a lot of little petty little things that just irritated me that I'm trying to rectify as I go. Uh, all right, so 56, 56, 56, nothing. We'll take it. So we only got the one smuggler who's who's approaching the house to sell some stuff, some exotic stuff. And then there's the uh, and then the ship that exploded as it come out of orbit, and that leaves us with you know the the components, and then this this other ship uh, didn't didn't break down or did break down a lot. Now uh, ship components, infrastructure, ship components, free fabs, Special cargoes. Man, I had to do a bunch of redoing on those things. All right, here's our ship component chart. That's just just for just for shits and bagels. We'll go ahead and uh, fire this damn thing down the row and get it off and done. So 10 LBB twos. Keeping in mind, we don't know what any of the conditions of these are because I'm not going to roll all that stuff up right now. 44 uh, point defense gun PDG. That's not bad. Point defense gun would uh, think of the uh, the Fairnex or the those big automated the, the Navy likes those big automated guns that just just brrr, buzzsaw stuff out and they whip around and you know they're they're sensor control that kind of stuff. Uh, that's basically what this is. This is a, a, a warship grade or a ship class grade uh, anti uh, missile anti missile anti fighter uh, defense system. And uh, it is the smallest of the uh, kinetically driven naval grade weapon systems available, which means it is far more potent than uh, the average gun mount version. This would be an, you know the, the next greatest, the next step up kind of thing. And so this would be an awesome uh, addition to any of my scouts. Either one of my scouts. It's just and and they have more than enough capacity on them. It's just a matter of plugging it in, taking the time to take it to the shipyard and plugging the bitch in. I mean, and figuring out what the damage is, of course, on it. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's a nice find. Thirty, thirty is a life support system five. Okay, that's that's one of the biggest life support. We're talking supporting hundreds of people. So if that's if that was the ship's primary life support system, then at the minimum we're looking at a class uh, a class five hull. Maybe I, I tend to believe on the class six. A class five is 749 tons of metric uh, tons on the frame. So that's the frigate scale. That'd be a bulk hauler, uh, a, a very small passenger liner. Right, that'd be on the small end for passenger liner. Uh, it would not qualify as a cruise liner, but it would be a you know, uh, the next stage down. Uh, or it's uh, uh, a mold one component of many. This could have been a half a million ton super cruiser that just blew up, and this is all that survives. 
right? And the only way to, for us to figure that out is to do one of two things, is to, piece, to, to look at the components and try to re-engineer what we think it might have been, or we just fly it out to pick up the survivors and we send a negotiate, have somebody to go in and interrogate them, do an investigation uh, to find out what the ship was and they're gonna they're readily gonna it would be a really easy because these people should have no problems telling you i was on the star of india and it blew the hell up right they may not know why it blew up they may not know that there was a problem on board maybe there was and they're all freaking out about it you know once again do you really want to know <laughs> is that the sort of thing you want to follow because sometimes you get tied into and it drags you into other stuff and you have to go eh, eh, it's more than I wanted to know right so they start so it was horrible man they started coming out of the wood no nope, stop right there at that no we're good good for you you survived the horrific thing go get some lunch on me we don't want to know any more at that point because whatever it was it died with your ship and it's just be glad that it did that you know, and you all didn't bring it with you because I don't want to dick with that. Right, so I'm just, you know, the obvious thing. So 99 is a fuel cell 2. Now this is a, definitely something I would want to refurbish because once again, uh, if I can get it in a, in a cargo, a, one car, a small cargo bay and this fuel cell and, I, uh, and a couple, uh, well I need more sublight drives and another star drive, but I could take one of my scouts and, and kit bash it into a light freighter. I'm not prone to, inclined to do that, but I could using that. Uh, what we don't know is using say a fuel cell 2, well this could have been a much smaller ship kind of thing. No, because there's other problems. One, these components ne necessarily are actually components of the ship itself. They could have been in cargo storage, uh, items that just managed to survive the explosion, uh, or they, they would be uh, secondary uh, items. So when it comes to fuel cells, it's not uncommon when you get up into the larger ship classes to shoehorn in smaller components all the time for various reasons. So for example, if I had a, uh, a, a fuel bay or a, a, a hangar deck where I'm operating a lot of starfighters, I might choose to have a secondary fuel cell whose sole role is to, to provide fuel for my fighters. And that would be the reason, justification for having that one as opposed to one of them having several class fives. And, and, and then the other one would be for, to, fit the, to fit the niche. So it's like star drives. Uh, we need to get to a certain mass push, but we also need to have a certain speed. And sometimes we need to take a smaller st a star drive and wedge it in with a larger star drive to give it that extra muscle. And so this is how we end up with a, with a couple tech ones, you know, in battery next to a tech, in between a tech, tech four with two tech ones on either side of it kind of arrangement. Just because of a lower technology doesn't mean that they don't find their way into higher technology, you know, higher tech stuff because they're the building block that other stuff is made on. It's not rocket science, I mean, well, you know. So, I mean, uh, the fuel cell is a, a nice item and there's a lot of advantages to it. So that brings us to four. Need one more, because you can't count the lifeboats, of course. So 42, a Mark III missile battery. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. The Mark III missile battery is quite large. It's, uh, would, you would need to have, you would need to have a, a, a Tech 4 or higher hull for minimum for a warship, a, a destroyer and up, destroyer, frigate, or cruiser to warrant having a Mark III. I'm not saying you couldn't put a Mark III on a gunboat or on a sloop, you could. Uh, but it's going to be the only weapon that's going to be on that ship and you're going to be hard pressed to keep it supplied with ammo because to go with the, it's not enough to have a, a missile battery that can fire I, I think in this case six missiles at a shot you want to you know fire six batteries and you know, six rounds of missiles under at a go and we're talking ship grade missiles here not not little pissy missiles so we're talking sh you know missiles that are four or five meters long and half you know meter wide or half a meter wide depending on the you know which model you're using and uh you know flinging six of these bitches out at a, at a time at one to six targets so how many reloads can you do how many of these can you fire before you go blank 
right? That's one of the things that why missile batteries are selective. So, uh, in theory, in theory, I could take this Tech 3 missile battery and stick it on a Tech 1 hull and make a missile boat out of it. Uh, I am not likely to be able to add any kind of cargo capacity to the ship whatsoever, which means uh, I would need an ammo bay to go with the, the, the missile battery. The smallest ammo bay is not going to hold more than a, maybe two reloads, maybe, for that. And I don't think it would even have that much because there's the smallest one's meant for gun mounts and crap. Uh, so you maybe have one, maybe one reload. And uh, the other possibility is if is when you're going to have a dead load. And what I mean by that is is we're not going to have the ability to reload at all. So we have selective fire. I can choose to choose all six missiles in one go, or I can shoot them one at a time. So uh, if I were to mount this thing, say, in one of my scouts, which it would need a whole lot of other components to make that work, but uh, if it, just to say we mounted it in one of our scouts. And then I chose to put two uh, we as in weapon grade material issued uh, missiles in the in tube, uh, the two of the four, six tubes. The other four tubes I choose to put probes in. So then my scout can be firing probes off as it's exploring space and then have two missiles on board for defensive purposes or offensive needs if necessary. But for any kind of extended battle, it, that ship's screwed. You can't reload and you're screwed. So, I mean, uh, you fire your load and run home. I mean, that's basically how that would work. And I've seen players play that, round, that kind of game. I launch in, drop a load of missiles at these guys and pull out. You know, and they spend the next cycle hauling back, reloading, and then coming back and doing it again. And, and they don't do enough damage, you know, collectively, but it's the fun of it. So, I mean, you know, it, it's one of those you can do and you can choose not to do. So, uh, we got all of our components, and that's always nice, right? And so that brings us to uh, some of our clean the house kind of stuff. I want to look at my, uh, all right, so. I currently have no blueprints under research, which doesn't seem right to me. No, I'm researching, oh, I need to uh, uh, build blueprints. I still haven't figured out a blueprint to, to research for the house. Uh, I, I really need to do that because I should not be wasting the space uh, and not having something going on here because that's just kind of silly, right? All right, so let's, let's look at... Uh, uh, all right, uh, so I am researching Tech 2 star drives. Uh, we're down to two cycles now. So I gotta reduce all these things to two. And my shipyard production is producing five SLDs and two more cycles to go for those. And so here's what I was getting at earlier. So my, my, during the cycle 18, my drop shuttle is going to be busy. It's going to spend the entire cycle rescuing people in their lifeboats and then going up and rescuing those components. And then I will look at those components and, and we'll do an event roll to, or an, a, a video on them and roll for all their percentages and, and, and determine who came up, who we, who we rescued kind of stuff. Uh, at that point, then I can decide which one, which if, if any or all of these components I want to refurbish, I want to repair. And then I will assign my shipyard to just flat out repair it. And since there's more than enough workers in general techs to do this, I don't have to worry about keeping track of this crap. All I have to do is meet all the physical demands. So I go and I look at the, so if my fuel cell is 90% destroyed, I'm going to need 90% of the material goods that it took to build it originally, all of it, and 90% of the original cost to and then pay that once I deducted the material needs and I've, co I've committed my I've taken them out of my exchange for this purpose and I've taken the credits out of my exchange for this purpose it's now a done deal and then I just wait the next cycle I get a brand new com uh, as good as new brand, uh, component uh, that only took one cycle for them to fix 10 days to, to refurbish. Or if you want to make it technically, it could have taken 19 or two cycles, however you want it. It still comes out at the end of your cycle. So uh, uh, the next cycle. So uh, they, 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 they refurbish them as opposed to taking five cycles to build one from scratch, brand new from scratch. Now, how can, well, I, I, I don't care. I'm just saying, here's the advantages, disadvantages to it, right? All right, so uh, meanwhile, we are still 
researching those bounce those bouncer bee stun stuff to see if, if we can make anything out of it. And I have not assigned anything to this other shit. I don't make no sense. What was this? Uh, oh, I know what he's supposed to be doing. What the hell did I put that down? All right. And he would have had three cycles, and he already started, so we're down to two cycles, right? Okay. So a cure for the agrovirus, because I remember I did a video on that last cycle. That's what I had uh, set up for this cycle to start doing it. Uh, so that, that Imperium researcher is researching the damn uh, uh, agriculture problem so we can get a fix on that. And then uh, after that, I, just, I'm, I have to check. I need to check to see how, if, I, if I set up the scenario to research the, uh, the vaccine needed for, uh, for Kepa's folly so my people can operate on the surface without getting sick all the time. So anyway, uh, build queue. All right, this changes. So our our housing concern one has completed. So okay, so I've completed my tech one housing concern. So what I would do is that on my map or in my house uh, stats, I now have doubled my housing capacity. We started out with one housing uh, housing uh, uh, concern one, and that allows us to handle up to an up to fifteen thousand people in cramped conditions. Idle idle conditions is ten thousand people. So you can, you know, everybody in my colony at 11, just short of 12,000, it's getting a little, little tight, but they're not stepping on each other's toes yet. There's room to move and, and get around. So now we're expanding. So I have a choice. I could either, you know, set this up as my city or uh, as uh, in my colony, or immediately in my immediate colony on Fairwind, and literally call it the city. And now I would have up to 20 or up to 30,000 people. Uh, living in my city or I could set up a second town somewhere else on the planet's surface this allows me to split my population up it also allows me to split my in industry and other things up too uh, for raids and pirate and defense and stuff like this the, for, the more targets they have the you know ease, the better you are in the long run so this is something that's possible uh, uh, to do another possibility and is uh, we're getting down to the to the the role play schematics or the world building uh, uh, type side of the game. So I could choose to have a city or I could have several small towns or sizable towns uh, or I could break these up into individual tiny towns and villages. So the, the books very specific on the on the how these builds are formed and, and laid out. So a housing concern can be divided by 10. So a, a sub build of a housing concern would be a uh, uh, a thousand to fifteen hundred people. So we'd have a town of a thousand on average, a thousand to fifteen hundred people, and we could so then we would put ten of them, and we'd have our the first one representing uh, the Fairwinds uh, Colonial Center, and then we set the other ten, and we could put them out in the surrounding and expand our map board out, so we'd have these little towns in the surrounding countryside and down the road we have event roles that allow this to be built and that to be built and we could have them there you know so your platinums could each have their own community and uh grow up around their 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 estates and their you know and become a little micro micro feudal system kind of set up if that's the way you want to go uh you know it's a matter of flavor and taste i mean you know uh, at the end of the day so that's that's something that that's interesting to know so we need to figure out what build what's the next build you know so one of several things have to have to come up uh, the house I have to look I have a slew of builds I want I want a heavy foundry I want a waste treatment facility I, I want uh, uh, a water processing facility I want another agri concern uh, you know another mining concern would be great uh, I have, uh, and a, a factory B would be great I mean so there's a lot of 
you know and then some of that requires me researching the blueprints for them which I don't have or haven't done yet which is why I said I, I surprised myself that I didn't have something in there which means I need to find out what blueprints what blueprints to freaking uh, you know to research next because we need to have that shit it's all stuff that needs to be on there uh, it takes time so we get that and get the other thing uh, then that brings us with uh, uh, oh deciding once again what the build so if I don't have all the materials and that's probably the problem the reason I picked on a housing concern first because it's something you need to have right away it's one of the first th two or three builds you need to build right off the bat is another housing concern it just gives you some space uh, and, and and so uh, and it's also the easiest to build material wise so I don't know that I have the materials for everything else yet and not until I get access to this trade world can I guarantee that I can get them in, in significant quantities uh, so the house is kind of hamstrung from that perspective so to fill that gap this is where we take negotiations and we turn to our, our platinums so we look at our platinums and go can I get you to build something and negotiate with them something that we need the house needs that benefits the platinum but benefits the house and uh, that you can the house can support you know you can't build something your infrastructure can't support kind of thing so that's that's one of those things we ha you know have to determine yet what you know and how that's going to play down play out down the road so you know and the other thing I have yet I still have to get uh, those uh, you know uh, agronites tied into to uh, the damn agri concern too because obviously they're we want them we want their production uh, where is my list uh, you just gotta have these stupid note things I mean you just just gotta gotta have them alright so cycle cycle 17 or 18 I'm gonna run this about do this one off. Oh. No. Right? I mean, next bill, next blueprint. Alright. So we need to take care of those things. So we negotiate with somebody to put something in the build because my build queue is currently finished. So before this cycle is over, I want to have something else under construction. I also still have to address the fact that I actually do have two. I, I should have a second build queue here because I have that other construction group that came in and set up shop. And I I haven't quite nailed down exactly what and where. But they it's a commercial outfit. So I would have, as a house, house would pay them. Uh, to manufacture so the cost items that we have certain certain cost material wise we have to pay outlay so when we pay the credits to pay for a bill instead of the credits going to the to the, the, the ship you know, the ship or the the house uh, construction project is going to a private project they're benefiting from it and we don't need to worry about it at that point but uh, they they can still be constructing things so I think they're tied to, uh, I think they're dedicated right now to building the, the estate uh, that it was negotiated in the current cycle or they would be that's one of those things where I need to you know get it all get the the damn nuts and bolts figured out and get it down another thing here is we got coming down on, on our cycle is our dojo that we set up so the Ministry of Intelligence dojo agent so we need to set up next class Okay, so what what we've got here is our minister of intelligence uh, had to hire that uh, uh, acquired that uh, weapons uh, uh, sensei or, or special arts sensei or whatever it was and set him up to do classes and he he's allowed to uh, uh, train up to six people so in this case I have him training a single agent in this case Chastity Blake and then uh, a five a five man uh, uh, black ops team so they both graduated
Okay, so we want to put them down there. So what that means is, A, Chastity Blake is now free to either be moved into a different training program if I had one available, which I don't, uh, or to be put back in the field. So now she's in the field with a little bit of martial arts training under her belt. So she got some, uh, uh, some little, she got a little skill that she didn't have before. So the question is, she's gone going in the field, so do I take Fred Dodge or, or, or somebody else and stick them in that slot so they can benefit from this? Uh, that would remove Fred Dodge from circulation for five cycles while he's going through the program, but it makes Fred Dodge a much more potent individual five cycles down the road. That's something we have to make that decision on. And then, of course, the, we have to decide who else goes in the program. Keeping in mind, I don't. I, I chose to use a single, a five squad, a five man squad of my special ops team, and an agent. So that gave me the six that the the the, the sensei is allowed to train. So uh, I could then choose to have six special agents. I could have six six special agents, or I could have two agents from this ministry and two agents from that ministry, and one from these three or these two. So I mean, it's it's as long as you keep track of who you're training. There's part of the key. So that said, I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to find my squad, uh, my squad forms, and I probably already have one set up under my intelligence ministry. I already have X amount of special service, uh, and I think uh, no, this I have to go back and look at my notes because I think this squad is uh, my protector service. So I would go back to my protector service uh, subsection in my folder and uh, pull out the unit list and I would designate whichever that unit was that went through this program because they need to add that martial arts skill to their collective skill. Now that's important to keep in mind. Why do we do that? Well, this now is a squad out of eight other squads that, or more that I have that has something slightly different from the rest. It has a, a skill set in, in physical combat that the others lack, which is a good thing for that unit, for that squad. We want that squad to, to be separate from the others for that reason alone. But the other reason is, is because over time, if you don't lose an entire squad, they wipe out. Uh, you can lose two, Three, you can lose four of your five people, and your squad's your, as long as one survivor gets gets passed, then your squad's still intact. You just add more people to it. Now that does affect ranking. There's actually a a, a, a formula for that. So the more new people, the the less your ranking. You know, you see a decrease in their abilities uh, as a collective group, but uh, uh, as an individual group up the road. I get to where I need to tap. Uh, so let's say this, this squad goes through two or three different types of training and maybe some augmentation down the road. So they end up with uh, some special equipment, some special knowledge, uh, maybe some implants and things like this. Uh, at some point, they become very good at everything I point, you know, whatever task they get assigned to, they're very successful at. At that point, perhaps, I want my next 007, I'll just tap an individual from SEAL Team 6 to be my next James Bond. You see how you play that out. So instead of some wet behind the ears, untrained, unranked individual just getting thrust into a position and having to learn the hard way, well, we've already had these people that have gained a ranking experience, have been in combat, been in other situations, and had some extra training and extra bells and whistles. Well, we then just tap that individual, uh, one of those people to make the individual, and now we have the starting frame of our next 007. So, you know, uh, Blake, Blake Manley, you know, Blake Manley, uh, uh, I don't know, inspector at large, whatever. So perhaps, uh, you know, uh, that's how they, they get progressed. But as, to do all that, we got to keep track of all of this. So we want to know and we want to go in and remember we have to replace these people. So we now know we have our batch of people that are graduated. Uh, this just leaves us... I can't uh, figure out exactly all the different events I want to do on the cycle and uh, right doing my exchange and figuring out how much uh, profits. So as of last cycle, it was 898 credits in the in the in the good. I just sent a hundred of it to the trade world, so we'll see a significant drop in in uh, or so there'll be a neg you know big negative in addition to all this other crap. 
uh, but we picked up about seven commodities, seven resources that will fill in blanks uh, and actually make us you know, reduce our negative and impact our, our positive, which is always a good thing. So, hey, that's that's just the way it goes. This has been a bit of a lengthy one. Uh, they tend to get that way sometimes. I, You know, the trade world ran almost two hours. I, even I was surprised after I, I didn't realize how long it was until after I lo uploaded it. And I kept going and I kept loading and I kept loading. I'm thinking, did I break something? Is something wrong? You know, uh, it was after after I was able to upload that damn near two hour video that I felt quite confident in, sw in cutting the cable box, getting rid of Mediacom and uh, going with that Verizon home box that's sitting out there. Because if it can handle, if that 5G wireless internet can handle me uploading a damn near a two hour video on Trade Worlds, right? Just saying. Anyway, I'm Rick, you're not. This is cycle 18. Uh, I suspect that it will probably take us another five to six months to go all the way through the damn cycle once again. Depends. Depends on how event rolls uh, occur. Uh, I mean, we don't have as many as the previous cycle. Uh, I had a lot of secondary events that, that came up. Uh, they had some stuff that came in so uh, that I wanted to address. There was a couple of things I meant to go address and I chose not to. Uh, it's like uh, the event where uh, where uh, 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 our agent goes off on a, uh, or, uh, Fred Dodge goes to talk, tries to talk to the thug leader and she bolts and she runs. And uh, my option at that point was to have a chase to, to, to play out a chase and I, I got thinking about it since it looks good here but what, what would be the purpose Fred Dodge doesn't want to hurt this person he, he wants to actually befriend or or you know turn this person he wants to find some way to, to, to take get advantage of taking advantage of people running the damn uh, thug group so we know who our local thugs are we can get the house can take advantages of that right in good and bad ways, but to do that, you gotta you gotta breach that. So if the other person bolts, well, yeah, you can you could chase them down and tackle them and get into a fight and, and risk getting you know my uh, Fred Dodge getting killed, uh, or uh, Fred Dodge could choose to let her go because that actually becomes a a a perk. So the, the next encounter with this individual. Uh, Fred Dodge can actually throw that out and said, look, I could have arrested you the last time you ran. I could have shot you in the back and been perfectly illegal to do so. You see what I'm saying? So I can, I can put that point down and figure that that's worth, I don't know, 5%. I look at the modifiers and see just because there are modifiers for that sort of stuff. So maybe I can gain a bit of a modifier that I can use in the negotiation uh, or the interrogation or whatever. So up the road. And so I, I chose not to pursue it, right? I chose to let it go and, and, and not pursue that. And, and so uh, we still have those street samurai that are resisting any kind of job offers so they need to leave <laughs> I need to just ignore them and figure that uh, they've gone their merry way or I need to I don't know start doing the 21 questions mother may I crap kind of stuff and how do I go about that and do I do I do it it's just like uh, furthering my uh, getting uh, uh, contacts made with my own pi uh, the the pirate haven that I have on planet, we want to take advantage of that some, you know, as well. And so we want to, but we want to move slowly. We're not trying to, to throw a wrench into that kind of crap. Uh, then there's, uh, oh, the ongoing situation with our platinums. Uh, we got to figure out more about what's going on there, you know. And uh, but there's no current event roles that occur with that. Oh, and that terrorist is still running around loose. You know, I uh, haven't heard nothing. We haven't had any event roles. So I could idly say and say, okay, and I'll uh, let's say after two more cycles and I don't hear any event rolls, then perhaps this individual's just moved down the road and that's now finished, now to worry about. Or that person went underground is, and I've lost contact with them. And uh, since I you know, can't find anything further on them and I haven't devoted anybody to try, perhaps that's something I gotta go back through my notes and see exactly where I have progressed on that particular line to see if I need to progress further with it or kill it. 
you know, and, and go from there, right? And I think there's a couple other things that I need to do some checking on, right? I know another thing I need to do is go to the bathroom soon. Anyway, I'm Rick. You're not. Missy's over there. Hope you guys have yourself a great weekend. I'm recovering from I don't know what the hell is.